everyone welcome back to my channel if you are new here then i am shelly and i am mummy to three little girls who are one nearly seven and ten now this is a video that i'm going to try and not get emotional in because it is a very hard subject for me to talk about and it was something that i never thought would happen to me in a million years and I want to talk about it because I think that it helps me to get through it by talking and if I can help just one other person go through what I'm going through then it will all be worthwhile but yeah if I just start back at the beginning with my last baby Ellie I suffered really badly with hyperemesis which is an extreme case of sickness in pregnancy I was hospitalised and bed bound for 16 weeks I was either in hospital on a drip because I was so dehydrated because of the amount of times that I was sick or I was at home in bed not even having the energy to go to my ensuite at the end of my bed to go for a shower or to the bathroom. It was pure hell on earth and the whole pregnancy I suffered really badly with sickness but the first 16 weeks were the worst where I couldn't even get out of bed. I missed time with my kids. I couldn't look after them for a whole 16 weeks. Somebody else had to be here to look after them solidly because I just couldn't. I couldn't even drink water without being sick. And I lost nearly four stone in weight in the first 16 weeks. And yeah, it was absolutely horrendous. And I never had that in my first two pregnancies. I hardly had any sickness, to be honest. But the thought of going through that again filled me with dread and yeah, I didn't know if I could do it again. So since Ellie's been born, we have been using protection. Now, at the end of January, we actually used protection and it failed. I took the morning after pill two days after our contraception failed. And I have took the morning after pill before and it worked. And, you know, I just thought that it would work again. Around two weeks after this weekend, when we'd had the um, mishap with the protection, my boobs started hurting and I thought, oh, my period's coming. But as the days went by, my boobs were really hurting, like the hurting that they are when you're pregnant. And I started to think, oh my God, what if I'm pregnant? And I thought, no, no, I can't. can't be pregnant. Um, I took the morning after pill, blah, 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 blah. But I still felt really pregnant, like my boobs felt tight, my boobs hurt and I felt really tired all of a sudden. So um, me and the kids went shopping one day, it was half term, during half term. It was actually Pancake Day, Shrove Tuesday, when I found out we'd been shopping for the day and I just picked up a pregnancy test just to rule it out. And when I got home, just put the kids in the living room and I was needing a wee, so I took a test, left it on the side in the kitchen and just carried on putting the shopping away. And then I glanced over and boom, there it was. A massive po positive pregnancy test it was the lines were dark and I was just like in complete and utter shock I was like there is no way this can be positive so I took three more pregnancy tests they all came back positive and for 45 minutes I was just in the kitchen having like a panic I was just like this can't be happening I cannot be pregnant like what the hell type thing I was just absolutely in shock and I text David who works away so he wasn't due home for another few days and I was like you've got to ring me you've got to ring me and he just texted me going oh why what's wrong and I was like can you just ring me like god's sake I'm going mental here <laughs> so he rang me and I was like I'm pregnant and I was like, I can't, I can't have a baby. I can't have a baby. Like, I can't go through high premises again. Ellie's not even a year old yet. I just can't have a baby, David. There's no way. And David was absolutely brilliant. He just said to me, you know, you're in shock. You've just found out. He said, why don't you make a doctor's appointment and go and talk to the doctor? Whatever you decide, I will stand by you. And we'll get through this. Just don't worry. Don't panic. Just calm down. So I took the kids to their dad's because it was his night to have the kids and I went to the doctor's and I was like, I can't do it. I can't have 
another baby right now because I'm so scared of getting high premises again and there's nowhere I'd cope because now I've got Ellie and um, I just explained everything to them and um, they said that if I wanted to end the pregnancy then you know that could be arranged um, so I had, an, I had an appointment made to end the pregnancy because I was just absolutely in shock and then I went to my mum's house that night and I just was like, I can't believe this has happened. You know, we were so careful and always had been since Ellie was conceived. Um, we were so careful, I said, but I'm pregnant and I said, I can't have it, I just can't. I can't go through high premises again. So that was the, the very first night. And then when I was laid in bed that night, I was looking on um, forums about having an abortion and the process and what happens and to be honest it sounded heart-wrenching it sounded awful the things that the thing that you had to go through to have an abortion just sounded horrific and I was like there's no way I can do that I just can't I would live with the guilt for the rest of my life and yeah I, I just couldn't have an abortion I knew that deep down um, but I also couldn't go through high premises again and I was just like, why am I in this position? We took, we used protection and I also took the morning after pill. Like I didn't want to be in this position where I would have to make such a heart breaking decision about what I was going to do. And honestly, I'm just, I'm getting a bit upset because I just can't believe that it had happened to me. And my husband was away, like he was working away and I hadn't really got anyone to speak to. I just did so much research on high premises, you know, what's the odds of getting it again, um, different medications that I could take. I looked um, thoroughly on abortion and what that entailed and I was just an absolute mess. I didn't know what the hell to do because I knew deep down I couldn't live with having an abortion. I did know that right from the very start that I just couldn't, I couldn't do that. But I also couldn't go through high premises. So for a few days, I just didn't know which way to turn. But I kept like thinking to myself, I need to be taking um, folic acid, I need to be doing this, I need to be doing that, I can't drink alcohol. And I would hold my belly at night and, you know, when I had a shower and stuff, like when I was in the bath, I would hold my belly and like I already wanted the baby because of my instinct. The instinct that you get when you're pregnant is to mother the baby and to want it. and. Yeah, as the days went on, I found myself like getting excited and I, ha I didn't feel sick at this point either. Um, and I thought maybe I'm not actually going to get sick again. Maybe this is meant to be. Um, even my mum come around to the idea and said, maybe it is meant to be. Maybe you're meant to have the fourth baby. Maybe this is going to be your, your boy that you've always wanted. Maybe you're not going to get sick. Just maybe this could work and you could have this baby and not be so sick again. And um, yeah, I basically was going to have the baby and I'd got my head around it, I, ha I wasn't feeling sick, I just had sore boobs and I was tired, which I could cope with if I didn't get really sick. Um, and it started to get to the point where I had high premises at this point in my last pregnancy. I was coming up to like six weeks and I hadn't, I didn't feel sick. So I was like, yep, yeah, I can, I can do this. If I don't get sick, we're going to have a fourth baby. And then I was starting thinking of Ellie would actually have some a little baby brother or sister to grow up with because Sophie and Amy are so much older. Um, I was thinking of when we buy a house this year that we would need like extra room for a baby. I was thinking of names. I was thinking of like next Christmas we would have four babies and yeah I was actually looking forward to it once I'd get my head around it. Um, and I think David also was as well a little bit and he would text me and be like are you okay? How are you feeling? And I was starting to panic that I wasn't feeling sick. So I arranged for a scan, which was going to be at um, just over six weeks. And um, 
it was coming up to Ellie's birthday as well. Um, so my aquarium vlog, all of Ellie's first birthday videos, I knew I was pregnant and I was happy, especially the, the aquarium vlog. I, you know, we were celebrating Ellie's first birthday and I also felt really happy inside because I was having another baby and we were going to have another baby and yeah, I just felt really happy that day and I felt like complete. Um, after her birthday celebrations, I went for a scan and this was, the, the scan time was just before 10 o'clock. I wouldn't have had time to get Ellie to nursery and get my two kids to school before this scan appointment. So David said he would take the two kids to school and I would take Ellie to school. I would drive to the hospital and he would meet me there. Hopefully he would get there in time for the scan because we didn't want to miss it or anything. So I got to the hospital and David hadn't got there yet. And um, yeah, I should have been like nearly seven weeks by this point. And with Ellie, I'd had a scan at um, six weeks, six days, and there was a baby, there was a heartbeat, there was everything there that should have been there. So that's what I was expecting to see on this scan. So um, because I was quite early, she just said, look, I'm going to have a look at the baby first, and then I'll turn the screen around and you can have a look. So I said, yeah, that's fine. My battery's frosting. Um, so yeah, she put the scanner thing on me and she was you know looking around and then after a couple of minutes she was like I'm really sorry but I can't see anything and I was like what do you mean you can't see anything I was like you, you, there must be something there because I had a scan last time and there was a baby and a heartbeat there um, and she was like I'm really sorry I can't see anything maybe you're a bit earlier than you thought and I was like no I'm definitely not any earlier, there's no other way, there's no other time that it happened that I could be any earlier. I just knew that I wasn't any earlier. So she said, do you mind if I give you an internal scan just to see if we can see anything clearer there? So I said, okay, yeah, that's fine. So she gave me an internal scan and she was looking around for ages and I thought, oh, maybe she's found something now. But she just said um, that your womb has thickened, you know, as though there should be a pregnancy there or there was going to be a pregnancy there she said your womb has thickened but I still can't see anything it's like in complete shock I was I was just like I couldn't get my head around the fact that there was nothing there I was like what do you mean there is nothing there I was like it's impossible there's got to be something there I am pregnant like I should be nearly seven weeks there should be something there and I was just getting really upset and she said and David still wasn't here by this point by the way he hadn't got there um, so she said, do you mind if we do a pregnancy test? And I said, yep, that's fine. So I went and did a uh, wee in one of those like cardboard things. And as I was walking back in, David saw me. So she'd just got the um, wee and done the pregnancy test. So the pregnancy test was thinking about it just as David walked in. And as soon as he walked in, I just burst out crying. And I said, there's nothing there. And I was crying my eyes out. I was absolutely in bits. And and then she said, this pregnancy test is positive. Like, it's really dark positive. And I said, yeah, I know. I've been doing them at home. I said, it just doesn't make sense to me. So she said, oh, um, I'm just a sonographer, basically. I don't really know anything apart from being a sonographer type thing. So she said, I'll get the doctor. So I was in the hallway and I was crying my eyes out. And David was hugging me. And he was like, just don't panic, don't panic, it could all still be okay. And we got took into a side room and we waited for a doctor to come. Before the doctor come in, David could just see how upset I was. And he was like, if you want a baby, we'll try again, we'll try again for another baby. But, you know, you know, it, you might just be earlier than you thought. It still might be okay, let's just see what they say first and then go from there. So the doctor come in, sorry, my battery died then, so I don't know if I'm in the same position or not. But, um, yeah, let's just carry on. So the um, doctor come in, she said basically I'm either not as pregnant as I thought and it was a little bit too early to see something on the um, scan. She said it could be an ectopic pregnancy or it could be a miscarriage. And what they had to do was take some blood from me and then I would have to go back two days later for some more blood tests to see if they doubled. Um, and then they would know whether it was a miscarriage or whether it was earlier than we thought or or whatever so that's what I had to do um, so I took some blood and then went home 
and yeah I was just numb um, I was hopeful because I wanted the baby but deep down I knew that there was only one day that it happened and it was the 27th of January and I'll never forget it now but that was the night that it happened so there was no way I was any less pregnant than what they were thinking that I might be.